Good afternoon. Thank you all for being here today, uh, both here in the room and with us virtually. My name is Marlis Lean. I'm the adult programming librarian here at the Council Bluffs Public Library. And I'm so glad that you were able to join us today. Today, Teresa Sward from the Western Historic Trail Center is going to be visiting with us. She contacted me back in January with the idea of doing this program today about Iowa tourism. Well, this year is the 175th anniversary of our statehood. It is certainly a time for exploring our own state to see what it holds. For those of you that are joining us virtually, stop by the library reference desk on second floor sometime soon and pick up the packet of travel ideas that she's going to review today and share with us. Now, I love to travel. I love to see the beautiful scenery and learn about the history of a community. So please join me in welcoming Teresa Sword as she shares the delightful corners of Iowa that we need to visit. Now I'm going to share the screen here again. Here's Teresa. Well, I want to say thank you to Marlis again because uh, we worked together on a quilt program that went over very well uh, in November. Uh, it was actually supposed to have taken place in September, but I had some family issues and we rescheduled it for November and we did the Pioneer Quilt uh, program where people created quilt blocks. And as Marla says, I contacted her in January because I was sitting there at work. We were allowed to come back in the building and after being gone almost a year from the Charles Center and actually sitting at my desk and I'm looking at all these brochures that we had just received right before they shut us down for the pandemic last year and I'm like, I really don't want to see all of this stuff go to recycling. What can I do to encourage people to look at past 2020 stuff? Because we still hadn't received our 2021 stuff as of yet in January. And so I thought, why not put together this wonderful program about traveling Iowa and the things you guys could see? There's a lot of things that people do not realize what Iowa has to offer. As Marlet says, it's our 175th anniversary this year as a statehood. I've lived here my entire life thus far and I enjoy Iowa. My parents have taken me on so many amazing Iowa trips and I've got to go as an adult and go see things that I never thought even existed in Iowa. So if you, if you ever dreamed of traveling to Europe, you can do that in the state of Iowa. We've got you covered. If you ever thought about traveling and seeing the oddball things like roadside attractions, Iowa's got you covered there too. You want to do a nature hike? We've got you covered. You want to go to amusement parks? We've got you covered. You like ice cream? We most definitely have you covered with the blue bunny. So let me tell you a little bit about things that you're going to see in Iowa. Uh, as Marla said, I am from the Western Historic Trail Center. We are still currently closed. We are one of the state historic sites of Iowa, but in addition to being that shortly after we opened, and we will be open 24 years come this October. So we're just one year away from our 25th anniversary at the Western Historic Trail Center. We tell the history of Lewis and Clark, California, Oregon, and Mormon Pioneer Trails. We also have walking trails, hiking trails down to the river, we have music occasionally that happens there, old pioneer country Western music uh, jam sessions. We have exhibits on all the trails and how traveling has developed over time, 14 minute film. But shortly after we opened, they decided to add the Welcome Center element to us. So we also have a full fledged Iowa Welcome Center area in our museum that gives you great information on things to see and do. Iowa, this is what you'll find when you go to Travel Iowa. And they'll have everything broken all out. And it has all of your welcome centers listed on here, where they're located and so forth at. And what you want to do when you're starting to plan your trip to Iowa, I suggest going to one of these welcome centers, looking at the stuff or looking online and building your trip. 
whether you want it to be a day trip and you only want to go an hour or so, you can go and figure that out by things that are in your community and outside of your community. If you go north on 29, you'll find all kinds of fantastic things along the Los Hills. And that's where we go to plan your trip. As I said, you can go to traveliowa.com and they'll have all kinds of fantastic things. One thing that people don't realize is that Iowa is well known for Hollywood too. Hollywood has some of the best Iowa people out there, I'll tell you. They, and they've done some great things in the state of Iowa as Field of Dreams was filmed here. And they've just done a whole bunch of work on the Field of Dreams uh, in Dyersville, Iowa. They're gonna have major league baseball games happening there in August and some other things too. So look at Dyersville, there are some fantastic things happening at the Field of Dreams there and they've reconstructed a lot of different things. It's on my bucket list to maybe try to do this summer. So that's on my list to do. So these Dyersville? are, huh? Where is Dyersville? Dyersville sits on the Eastern side of Iowa. So it's along, um, Delaware County. yeah, it's, it's on the Mississippi side of Iowa. I, I did the English Iowa, Missouri side and Mississippi side. <laughs> <laughs> they both start with an M. The other things is you have Donna Reed from Denison, Iowa. They have the Donna Reed Center there, uh, fantastic information. And of course, John Wayne. And he's from Winterset. And so Winterset also, and I've got a slide down here with the bridges of Madison County. It, you'll find stuff about uh, Madison County and the bridges of Madison County movie. And then one thing a lot of people don't realize, up Northern Iowa and uh, Mason City, you have the Music Man Town Square. And so Music Man Town Square is huge up there in Mason City and it's the fantastic. Huh? The movie with Lincoln? Yeah, well, a lot of the movie set and the director was from there. So they have a, the whole set in a museum up there. It's really unique and different. So if you get a chance, go most definitely to Mason City. And there's your bridges of Madison County, of course. And then we're going to go to Scenic. As we talked about, the one thing we, we're not sure about this year is how many museums will be open, open, how many sites and areas will be open for the public to go to, because everybody's still a little scared and not sure how COVID is effect, gonna affect the opening of museums. As I suggested, before you go and travel and you're planning your vacation out, you wanna take time and call the places you wanna see. See what their rates are gonna to be to visit because some of the information you have may be a little outdated and they'll, they may have changed their rates. Uh, the other thing is you wanna see what their hours of operations are. And if you've got to book a tour, because some museums are going to where they want you to book in a slot so that they only have so many people for a tour during mm -hmm. that time because of restrictions with, mm -hmm. because we still don't know how long the CDC is gonna want us to stay six feet apart and distance and wear masks. So, I mean, we're still at that edge of where we're not sure. So as I said, be careful with that, make sure you're planning that. But with the Lus Hills and scenic byways in Iowa, there's not gonna be much restrictions. It's all outdoors. Most of it's open and free to the public. They'll have donation boxes and places. But if you like to hike the Lus Hills, you could do that being you're right here in this area. And one day you don't have to rent a hotel. You could just go for a day and go hiking. You could go an hour away from here you could go two hours up towards Sioux City, see the Lust Hills up that way, still make it back by evening if you got an early enough start. It's just planning your time right and what you want to see. So we'll move on to the next slide. Next slide is DeSoto Bend. It's one of my favorite places to go. I'm not sure if they're open yet for operations. I did not get a chance to research that. But I know their outdoor area is open, but I don't know if the inside's open yet, the Bertrand. 
But when they do reopen and you're able to go up there and see the Bertrand, most definitely do it. It is a fantastic exhibit. You can't imagine going to a museum that has that many artifacts from one boat that sunk in the Missouri River and bringing those out and putting them in a display and seeing they have a display just on the boots and the shoes that they've recovered from that boat sinking. And it's, it's a fantastic exhibit. It's one of my favorite places to go. But if you like bird and wildlife scenery, that's another fantastic place to go. You can go up there with your binoculars, sit there, download an app on your smartphone if you have one, or if you've got a bird book or bird log, you can sit there and log the different birds you see and what time you see them, what day you see them, journal these, journal these type of things. Because in the year of this year of COVID and this coming out of the year of COVID, it'll be interesting to look back and somebody's journal many years later and say, hey, they went birding. They actually found something to do that was social distancing that they could enjoy and take their mind off of stuff. Okay. And the other thing that Iowa has quite a bit of that people don't realize is they have nature centers. You got the Dorothy Peacock Nature Center up near Sioux City. You have the uh, Hitchcock Nature Center around here. Uh, so many Iowa has. I suggest going to those because they have, again, the hiking trails, the outdoor stuff. And a lot of those are open you just go in, they give you the directions, and you go back outside and enjoy them. A lot of fantastic nature centers in Iowa and state parks. Um, the state parks of Iowa are fantastic. It's a great way to go out and explore your state. As Marla said, we're 175 years old. The state parks that are ran through the DNR has some fantastic parks that have cabins. You can go on to their website. They have a listing. And not only the state parks, but your county parks. Uh, Pottawatomie County Conservation, they just opened up, a, I think, three brand new cabins up at um, Arrowhead, not far from here. So if you're looking to rent a cabin and they're fully equipped with bathrooms and showers. So if you have not gone online or seen pictures of those, I suggest doing it because they are absolutely beautiful. I just seen them about a month ago and I'm very impressed and what a wonderful way to get people out into our county parks and camping is to put some wonderful cabins there. The one brochure and you guys will have it in your packet here is the State Historical Society Sites brochure. Uh, I pulled up one picture of the Abbey Gardner, and of course there'll be a picture of the Western Historic Trail Center because it's one of the state historic sites. As I was saying, these sites are not open yet to the public. Uh, they're talking in talks right now when our opening would be. Most of the other historic sites either open in April or May. I think they're still hoping to hit those dates at some point but keep an eye at the State Historical Society website. Also call the places and see if they're open because you've got the American Gothic House and that's in Southeast Iowa. Blood Run is in Northeast, Northwest Iowa and Blood Run is a outdoor exhibit type thing. It's really a national landmark with all kinds of great things. Uh, Central Iowa, you've got the Matthew Edel blacksmith shop they do some wonderful presentations up there. I don't know if they'll be doing very many this year. I'm keeping my fingers crossed. They usually have blacksmiths that come in and do demonstrations up there, but it's a fantastic thing. Northwest Iowa, Abbey Gardner Sharp Cabin that's up near Okaboji. So you could go visit the lakes, the Great Lakes of Iowa and stop in and see one of the historic uh, sites there. And of course, when we open at the Trail Center, we want you guys to come down there Toolsboro Mounds is another site that you can go to right now because it's outdoors. Uh, Plum Grove Historic Home is interesting. Montauk, uh, fantastic Victorian home up there of our first governor. Uh, lots of great things at that facility. And they do a lot of concert series and stuff up there. 
So as I said, keep an eye on the State Historical Society website under historic sites and see what those sites are. But you know, we, we wanna encourage you to visit those historic sites. And we have a little passport program going on as you go to each of those sites. If you collect a little stamp from each of the site, at the last site you go to, all the sites have like a little prize. It's a little magnet with all kinds of neat little things about Iowa on it that they'll give you. So that's one of the brochures there that um, I bring up. We talked about traveling Europe. Iowa has some of the most fantastic European connections. From your Danish, from Denmark area, you've got the Danish Museum and the windmill. That's, that's a day's drive there. And you could be back home in the evening if you lived in this area. The Danish Museum has developed a lot of outdoor exhibits too in gardens. Uh, and then you have the windmill, it's fantastic to go through. Uh, and then not far from there, you also have the little uh, Danish mermaid that sits on the rock that you can go pack yourself a little lunch and sit over there. But I highly recommend the Danish Museum. They have a lot of programs that they do throughout the summer and they're still open and they're doing some virtual stuff. So I would look at their stuff. You can call and book a tour with them. Um, but it's a fabulous museum. Just fantastic history there. Uh, the German Haas, it's a, a uh, interesting little German barn, barn house that's in Iowa, connects Germany to us. There's some other German uh, connections throughout the state, but it's, it's a unique building and structure. And it's in, um, Manning, Iowa, I believe. And uh, then this one you guys might have not heard of. Uh, how many are familiar with Corning, Iowa? Okay, well, Corning, Iowa, a lot of people don't realize is not only home, birthplace to uh, uh, Johnny Carson, but also is a settlement of the French, French colony. Uh, it's called uh, the Icarian, French Icarians, and they've established, reconstructed, and construct, refurbished a uh, couple of buildings that date back to the French colony time, and they're called the French Icarians, and they've done a lot of different things. They've got a schoolhouse, a community building, and they're doing a lot of things about the French Icarian colonies up there, so you can visit France through them. Uh, I know two summers ago, they were offering like, if you wanted to book a little tour in a history thing that you could, they, they worked with a local deli in the area that provided a French lunch basket with grapes and cheese and whether you wanted wine or if you wanted grape juice of some sort, they had all kinds of opportunities for you to enjoy a French, a French lunch type snack cuisine there. It's, it's absolutely beautiful what they've done with it up there. And I'm guessing you guys probably know what this might be. It's Pella. And Pella's coming up with their uh, Tula Festival here pretty soon. And uh, Pella is a Dutch community. Lots of great things going on there. But if you really want to feel a sense of not being in Iowa and being in Europe, Pella's the place to visit. It's absolutely beautiful. And especially during the Tulip Festival. And then this is clear on the eastern side of Iowa. Uh, it's in Cedar Rapids. It's the National Czech uh, Museum. They're world renowned and known for their museum and what they've done for their Czech history and cultural uh, aspect up there. They have a, it, it got flooded out in 2011 when the Mississippi flooded. There's a community there that are original settlement of the Czechs when they immigrated here to Iowa and the homes and everything. And so they're trying to save those because a lot of them were damaged during the flood. But if you get up there and you're able to go through this museum, it is fantastic. And another museum that's in Cedar Rapids that I love is the African American History Museum. They have some fantastic exhibits, uh, stuff on George Washington Carver, on the Underground Railroad, just amazing things you would never think you'd find in Iowa. 
And then you have, of course, the Amana colonies and Kelowna. And they have the Mennonite and Amish uh, type influences to them. If you've never been to the Amana colonies, that's a great weekend trip away. There's a lot of things for kids to understand and sort of step back into time and to be able to go to the Amana colonies. You know, you tell them to shut down their phones because you really step back into a whole different time period when you're in the Amana colonies or in Kelowna and the Amish community because it's a different experience when you go there. You really feel like you're stepping back to when people first settled in Iowa. And the, another museum that's very similar to that, if you ever want to experience stepping back into the pioneer time is going to Living History Farms in Des Moines. If you've never been there, I highly recommend it. Again, take, take kids there because, and make them shut their phones off for they really, <laughs> really, really get that experience because I went there as a Girl Scout and it opened my eyes to history. And I think that's why I've sort of fallen in love with the early American pioneer history was I went there as a young child and I got to experience that. And I was also influenced, of course, with Laura Ingold Wilder and the whole Little House on the Prairie experience. And so that just brought it full circle visiting uh, uh, the History Museum in Des Moines. So, okay. And then here, we're gonna talk a little bit. If you wanna do a trail experience, there's highway markers and you can go on to the State Historical Society site or you can go on to the Mormon site, Mormon trail site, California trail site, Oregon trail site, and they'll give you places to stop and see. And the Mormon trail is very prominent in Iowa. It starts on the Eastern side of Iowa and goes all the way down to the Western side here on into Nebraska. And to travel along that and experience some of the things that they experience and seeing where the markers are and reading those roadside markers. Again, this is something you wouldn't have to book a tour to see. It's more of an outdoor tour. You stop at these markers and you try to understand the experience that those pioneers had. Okay, and then we go to the Lewis and Clark Trail. That's one of my favorite trails. Um, I have some ancestors that were part of that trail. So I, I enjoy talking about Lewis and Clark because they're one of the most followed trails in the United States right now. They just, the National Park Service just about two years ago opened up the Eastern Lewis and Clark Trail portion of it and talked about pre-travel and the studies that uh, Mary Weather Lewis and William Clark were doing before they they designated the journey and went west, like getting the boat ready, where they bought the boat at, where the boat was built at. So all of that now has become part of the Lewis and Clark Trail. But Iowa has many, many sites from not only our site, but there's the Lewis and Clark Monument here in town. Uh, over on the Nebraska side, you have the Lewis and Clark Interpretive Welcome Center over there with the National Park Service. There's the Lewis and Clark icons along the Iowa Nebraska borders you can go see. Uh, Lewis and Clark State Park is fantastic. You can um, take and ride the keel boat and all kinds of stuff there. And then up in Sioux City, you have Sergeant Floyd's uh, monument up there and fantastic things to see there. And then of course, you've got the Underground Railroad. A lot of people don't realize that Iowa had a major part of the Underground Railroad. And more and more things are being developed. Uh, you have all kinds of fantastic places just right in our backyard on the Underground Railroad, if you ever want to experience that. It's so much history. And again, like I said, if you get up to Cedar Rapids, they've got a fantastic exhibit on the Underground Railroad at the African American Museum up there. Like I said, that, that one I've been to, I've been to that museum, it is beautiful. I haven't been for a few years, it's on my list again to hopefully get back to maybe this year, but uh, it's, a, it's a fantastic museum. And then we come to the Blue Bunny. Blue Bunny, yeah, Lamar's, Iowa. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping that they'll be back open this summer and have everything up and going. 
and we'll be welcoming visitors again at their ice cream shop and taking tours through the factory because it's really interesting to go see. Uh, it's sort of a fun thing. If you've got little ones or even big ones that love ice cream, it's the best place to stop and get yourself a little treat. Uh, I, I always say that I always got the cherry on top with the blue bunny being the blue bunny capital and uh, they, it's beautiful up there. It's Lamar's welcomes you fantastically to their community with the blue bunny. This is on my list this year for sure. I have not been to the Grotto of Redemption uh, for quite a few years and my niece wants to go. We, for Christmas this year, we we told them that we were gonna give them, my husband and I are giving them an adventure, what they wanna do. They ha it had to be within Iowa and Nebraska. They had to pick in somewhere they wanted to go. And I had posted something on my Facebook page, I think back in November or something about the grotto. And she's like, I wanna go there. That's where I wanna go. And the other niece is like, I wanna go to Okaboji. <laughs> so, so I guess I, I I'm destined to go to the grotto at Okaboji this summer. And the grotto is fantastic. Again, it's not one that you're gonna to have to make a reservation to go to. The only thing I would call and find out about is if they require you to have masks, most of their stuff is outdoors with the grotto as you're walking through. So I don't think they'll require you to have to have a mask there. But, you know, it's fantastic how it was built, the history behind it, and that it's in Iowa. Again, it's like stepping back in time into another, you know, almost into another country and what, how things were built. Um, this here is where I take a little bit of a turn. A lot of people do not realize how many great art museums are in the state of Iowa. And there's one that I found out about two years ago and it's in Clorinda and it's in their old Carnegie library. Uh, it was a couple from Nebraska who bought up artwork and they had a humongous collection and they just had them in storage all over the place because they, the wife would remodel their home constantly is what I read. And so they decided they both grew up in the Clorinda area and they weren't doing nothing with the library. They turned it into a museum. The artwork there is fantastic. World renowned artwork that you would never think you'd see in Iowa. Just unique sculptures and everything. And of course you've got Grant Wood. Grant Wood you'll find all over Iowa. Um, fantastic artwork. I mean, even right here in Council Plus we have ties to Grant Wood. So as I said, research, find out what you like. If you like art, we have some fantastic art museums. Both of the universities of Iowa, Iowa State and the University of Iowa both have wonderful art museums on their campus that I highly recommend. And of course, you've got your roadside attractions. We, somewhere in Iowa, they moved it. So I'm not sure, I think it's in Sac City now, they have the largest popcorn bowl. Not sure if oh, you guys knew about that. That's well, what's inside there. Yep, it's a popcorn ball because they can't leave it out in the elements. It dissolves. <laughs> so the whole history about the Borgia's popcorn ball is right there because if they had to redo it every year, that would be a task, I would think. So, and we've, we've just got unique things. Um, future place of Star Trek. Uh, Captain Kirk, uh, birthplace. I mean, just unique little things. And then of course, your larger than life items, a large skillet, one of the largest skillets that you can stand by. And Iowa has a large gnome. I didn't even know about that. That's in Cedar Rapids. And then of course, Albert the Bull. He's not far from here. He's just up along uh, 80. And then of course you got 99 counties. If you go and you just look at all these counties, each county has something fun and different that you can find something to see. Uh, I'm just, it amazes me that we have 99 counties. If you went and just did a day at, or try to plan a couple weekends throughout the year at all these different counties and find something fun to do, 
you'd be amazed at what, what Iowa has to offer because I followed the, uh, they've done it a couple of years, but they didn't do it last year because of the pandemic. But the State Historical Society has a mobile museum is what they call it. And in two years, they were able to hit all 99 counties and hit different attractions and brought some attention to those attractions by bringing the mobile museum to that. And also when they're able to do that, they're branching outside of Des Moines and bringing that history of Iowa to all of our communities and counties, which I think is fantastic because we don't realize all the history Iowa has to offer. If we're just, if we're stuck in just Southwest and we don't explore outward, we just know what's around us. We don't know what Eastern Iowa or uh, Northeast Iowa offers. It's, it's always a fun adventure. Uh, the other thing is, I didn't know about this until a couple of years ago, the ultimate Iowa waterfall road trip. Iowa has fantastic waterfalls. You can just do a big loop. A friend of mine did it in one weekend, her and another friend went and just planned a whole weekend and camp like right in the middle so that they could just go around and see all the different waterfalls. And that's another thing you'll find on your Travel Iowa site. Um, Iowa State Parks, they have a passport program. You can get on the DNR site or the Travel Iowa site, connect with that passport program. If you have a smartphone, they'll let you check in places. I don't know if they've got a booklet. They were working on that last year, but with the pandemic, I don't know if it got pushed back. Well, thank you, Teresa, for sharing all these ideas for a road trip and to all of you both virtually and here in the library for attending. So let's go see Iowa. Have a good afternoon.